Hello! In this video, we are going to be looking into what it takes to create and load our own Stardew Valley mods. In particular, we are going to create a Content Patcher mod that will change Abigail's hair color from purple to red. We'll start by installing Smappy and Content Patcher, then we'll walk through one possible workflow of creating a purely visual mod such as this. Smappy, or Stardew Modding API, is what will load our mods into the game. Let's go to smappy.io and click the screen download button, and then click on direct download. When it finishes downloading, we can head to our downloads directory where we'll see a zipped Smappy installer folder. To unzip this, let's right click on it and then press extract all. Choose a place to extract it, and then open the unzipped folder and you should see options to install on Linux, Mac OS, or Windows. I'm on Windows, so I'll double click install on windows.bat. A terminal window should open asking us where we want to install Smappy, which is wherever we installed Stardew Valley. I installed Stardew on Steam, so I'll type in 1 to select this first option and then press enter. We'll type in 1 again to install Smappy. If we ever want to uninstall Smappy, we would run this file again and type in 2 at this step. After you press enter, Smappy should install pretty quickly. If you would like to continue to launch Stardew Valley through Steam, we can copy this command and paste it into the game's launch options so that Steam knows to launch Smappy instead of the regular Stardew Valley executable. So in Steam, right click Stardew Valley and go to properties. Let's paste the command down here where it says launch options, and well that's it. If you are not on Steam, then you will need to launch Stardew modding API.exe in your game folder in order to play with mods. Nexus Mods is where you'll likely download most of your mods. Before we get started here, make sure you have a Nexus Mods account and that you're assigned in. Okay. Now let's search for Content Patcher and select the first result. We will then click on the orange manual download button at the top right and then press download. Finally, let's click on slow download and it should download. Open up your downloads folder and unpack the Content Patcher zip folder, just like we did with Smappy. Go inside the unpacked folder and in a new window, open another file explorer. In this window, let's get to where our Stardew Valley game is installed. To do that, we'll go to the start of our Windows drive, or the C drive here, and then Program Files, x86, Steam, Steam Apps, Common, and finally Stardew Valley. Now let's open the Mods folder, which if you don't have, you can create a new folder and name it Mods. Inside the Mods folder is empty, but not for long. This is where we'll place our new friend Content Badger. Since Smappy knows to run any mods in this folder, this is all we need to do. Content Badger by itself won't change your Stardew Valley gameplay. Its main purpose is to load what are called content packs, which can change the game's data, images, and maps without replacing game files. Okay, so we have Smappy and Content Badger installed. What's next? Well, we are pretty close to being able to make our own mod. In fact, let's go to the Stardew Valley wiki and search for modding. We would like to create a mod, but really, we want to make a content pack that Content Patcher will use to modify the game. So it will be a mod, but Content Patcher is doing the heavy lifting. What we will do is replace Abigail's sprite sheets and portraits with edited sprite sheets and portraits that we will make near the end of this video. Inside the game's folder, there's another folder called Content, which contains a bunch of subfolders that contain .xmp files. These files store data, maps, and textures for the game, but they are compressed, so we can't use them yet. We won't need the data or maps for our mod, but we will need the textures, or in our case, sprite sheets and portraits. X and B files can be tricky to unpack, but fortunately there's an easy to use tool called Stardew X and B hack to the rescue. 
Let's click this link on the wiki which takes us to a GitHub page with the latest release. Select the zip file corresponding to your operating system and it should download. Once it's finished, unpack it just like before and we'll take a look inside. We should see an executable and a PDB file. We need to place these two files in our Stardew Valley's installation directory. Once that's done, double click stardew xmbhack.exe, which should open a terminal window and begin unpacking all of the .xmb files in the content folder. This process can take some time to complete. Once it's finished, look back into the game folder and you should see a new folder called Content Unpacked. Let's take a look inside. In Characters, we see sprite sheets for each of the characters. We will be editing Abigail, so let's see what we're dealing with. In this sprite sheet, there are 14 rows of small Abigail sprites that are used in different animations in the game. In the Portraits folder, we'll find Abigail's portraits, which are the ones used when she is talking to you. So now, let's head to the Mods folder, where we will get started actually creating our mod. We will create a new folder and name it Abigail Red, since that's what our mod's name will be. And then we'll put a CP inside brackets at the beginning so that we know it's a content patcher mod. Hop inside and immediately make a folder called Assets. This is where we will put our edited Abigail sprite cheese and portraits in which we will color her hair red. With our newly unpacked content folder here on the right, we can copy Abigail's default portraits and paste them into our Assets folder. Before we can do the same with our character sprite sheets, we'll need to rename these portraits to something unique and descriptive. Now that that's done, we can copy and paste her sprite sheets so that all four files are in our Assets folder. It's probably a good idea to rename all of these to Abigail Red since these are the files that we're about to edit. Alright, so according to the wiki here, we will need a manifest.json file in our mods folder. Since we're not totally sure what needs to go into this file yet, we'll just copy this example. Now let's create the file and paste in the example. It's probably a good idea to make this more descriptive, so we'll do that real quick. This content pack 4 unique ID value won't need to change since we're using content patcher. If you are using a different content pack, you'll need to look up its unique ID and place it here. Next up, we have the content.json file. Let's copy this example and paste it into a new file called content.json. This file basically controls what your mod will be doing, so it is very important. Currently, since our changes field is empty, our mod isn't doing anything. Let's change that. Scrolling down slightly on the same page, we see an example with something in the changes field. Since we will be editing images, we should copy this part. Okay, action, edit image, that's good. Now this target field is what content patcher will be changing within Stardew Valley's content folder. Since Abigail's portraits are in the portraits directory, we should put portraits slash Abigail here. No need to put the file extension after Abigail. The last field, from file, is what content patcher will replace the target with, and it's based on your mods folder. Our Abigail Red's portraits are in our assets directory, so we'll put assets slash whatever we named our file. Let's see, it's called Abigail Red dash portraits dot png. There we go. Now we just need to do the same for the other three assets. I did make a mistake in the last entry. The target should say characters slash Abigail Beach instead of portraits slash Abigail Beach. Now that our content.json file is ready, we'll take on the daunting task of actually editing Abigail's sprite sheets and portraits. 
I will be using Pixel Studio since it is free and on Steam. This is actually my first time using it, in fact I still need to install it. Some other options for editing these files are Asprite, Photoshop, Paint.net, GIMP, Krita, Pixel Edit, and Pixel Studio. GIMP and Krita are completely free, and Asprite is free if you compile it yourself. Asprite is my personal favorite. So here we are in Pixel Studio. Now let's open up one of our assets. Okay, this is it. We're here. Now, what do we want to change? Oh, right, the hair. Hmm, it would be nice if we could edit all of these sprites at once. The best tool for this that I found on here, in my limited experience, is this paint bucket with a triangle on it, right next to the regular paint bucket. This will allow us to change every pixel that is the same color as the one we select. I'll try it out. Now, does this look good? No, not really. But it's the start, and we can always change it later. Let's save it and start working on the others. Ideally, we would have some kind of consistency between these sprites and portraits, but we just won't worry about that since this is mostly for demonstration purposes. Okay, we're all done. With all of our assets edited, it's finally time to test out our mod. Startup Stardew Valley and Smappy should run and show us that our mod has been loaded. Once we're in, we'll open up one of our saves and then try to find Abigail. Let's wait outside Pierre's until his shop opens at 9am. Alright. And there she is, as red as can be. Okay. Okay, bye Abigail. <laughs> if you enjoyed this video, I'd appreciate it if you answered this poll on my brand new Patreon page, which I will leave in the description. You don't need to be subscribed to my Patreon to respond to the poll, and no pressure to subscribe, but it would greatly help me out. Okay, um, so thanks for watching. Mm-hmm. <laughs>